Good afternoon, everybody, Uneducated Economist. Oh, the dice. Can't forget the dice. Wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update to what I'm seeing going on in the building industry. Now, two real important things that I've seen come up just recently that are not like significant to the point that it's going to change the industry, but it's more of like showing how the changes to the industry are taking place. And that is the closing of a lumber mill. I believe it's in the Midwest. I'll leave a link down in the description to the, uh, to the article. And this isn't like a terribly huge mill. I mean, they do employ a lot of people, 189 people, if I remember right, from the mill. So it is quite significant. I mean, that's that's a huge mill, but it's not like the gigantic mills that are out there that employ like thousands of people. So <clears throat> it's, a, it's a pretty significant story. And really, what's the reasoning behind it? The cost, cost of production. Now, I knew that there was a problem leading up to the end of 2019. You could see it taking place. There was a lot of mill curtailments and shutdowns and depletion of inventories before the lockdowns from COVID. There was an issue with these lumber mills and the cost of production being too high for them to be profitable at the current pricing that was that was at that time. Pricing had, pricing had dropped all the way down to around three, 400 per thousand before it took off again up to the you know 1,700 per thousand that it achieved. That moment in there had, was very painful for the mills. When it dropped from 650 down to the 300 per thousand, mills were in trouble big time. But then we saw the prices run up to 1700 per thousand. All the mills were pumping out as much lumber as they could. And everybody said that these mills were like manipulating pricing and stuff like that. I, I said very much differently. I, I was the one who was like adamant that this was an inventory depletion. This was a supply chain breakdown. It was transportation issues, but it wasn't necessarily a manipulation. It was just more of the way the condition of the environment that led us up into this. So there's some wild swings taking place inside of the lumber market. And right now lumber is down and it's really dramatic. I mean, it's to the point of 1700 per thousand where these mills could really pump out a lot of material, make a lot of money, invest in like new equipment or maybe, you know, give out raises and stuff. When it drops down to 400 per thousand, they're just not operational anymore. And that's exactly what's taking place. And it's not just in, in lumber. There's another article I'm going to leave down in the description to a local mill here who makes particle board who is also shutting down production. And I believe it's for the very same reason. So we can see that the building material industry is starting to really show some cracks in it. Now, how extensive this gets really depends on how long the lumber stays down at the 400 per thousand, making it ever harder for a lot of these mills who have high cost production going on, especially up there in the British Columbia area. We've already talked about that in a few, in a few videos. One of the other things that a lot of people ask me about, and I just don't really have a lot of input and knowledge to it, because you see, like when it comes to lumber, I'm in a lumber production area. I'm in the Northwest, and like Oregon is like one of the num I believe is still the number one producer of lumber in the in the country. So I'm right in the thick of production. I you know I have loggers or friends who are loggers who work at the mill, who do transportation as far as running you know trucks up to Portland to you know to deliver. So I know a lot about the lumber industry. Steel? Not so much. Now, I do sell steel, like steel sheathing for doing, you know, like barns, you know, pole barn kind of kind of metal. And I have watched the huge rise. Like, just to give you an example, a standard like three foot wide painted metal a few years ago would have been like a dollar seventy five, a dollar ninety a lineal foot. Like that would have kind of been a typical price. Is now selling for five fifty a lineal foot. And from what I understand, and this is something, if you guys are in need of that metal sheathing, I would not hesitate to buy it. Come the end of September, we have seen price increasing. We are going to see a price increasing through the yard that I work at that is going to have our cost just about where I'm retailing the price for right now. So we're going to see even more price increasing coming to metal. But I have a feeling it won't last. And the reason why it won't last is again because of the cost production, right? So these steel producers out there have the availability to now get iron ore in at a cheaper price. So this is the cost of production going into into steel. Now the demand for steel is still huge and the inventory is still like very low. So that's going to create a situation in which the price for steel is still going to be very high. But much like the lumber where the cost of production was really low, 
and they were able to produce a lot. People were able to, you know, well, I wouldn't say buy a lot of lumber, but started bringing a lot more lumber to the table, we started seeing the prices come down. So that's kind of what I see happening in steel. But how long that takes, that transition, who knows? I mean, the price of ore is down right now. If that continues, it's going to give those producers a cheaper cost of production, which is then in turn going to lead to competition. Once the demand has been achieved, like once they have filled in all the people's, you know, demand for being a shortage right now, right? Because the inventories are really light. Once they fill that inventory up, the competition is going to kick in supply and demand. The prices will come down. That's if the iron ore stays down at these lower prices like it is. So anyway, I'm going to leave an article for that too. Now it just happened to pop up. I was reading about it. It is an article coming out of India, if I remember right. But it was a pretty decent article for talking about just the metal in general. And since it's kind of a global commodity, I figure what's going on in India is similar to what's going on in other nations. So I just found it to be an interesting article. I'll leave a link down in the description for that one. All right, I'm going to go get something to eat. I'm on my lunch, Uneducated Economist. You guys let me know.